What's going on everybody? I'm Greg, you're watching the Car Passion channel, and today I'm going to be installing the crankshaft in the VVT engine. So what I've got here is a 1.8, or excuse me, 1.9 Miata block that's fresh out of the machine shop and ready for assembly. The assembly process on this is going to be very similar for all Miata engines 1990 to 2005, so you could use this as a guide for assembling any of those engines. And I'm only gonna say this once during my series. I'm gonna show you guys how I'm building my engine. I'm not going to show you guys the best way to build an engine. I'm not a professional, do your research. Now, that being said, the first thing I'm gonna do is install my oil squirters. Just drop in your oil squirter, followed by the bolt. There are no copper washers or gaskets or anything. Once you get it in, just torque it down to 105 to 156 inch pounds. I've included in the link below some PDF files I found that have all the torque specs and assembly instructions, etc., from Mazda. So that's that's obviously the most accurate and trustworthy information when you're doing this kind of work. If you guys remember from the disassembly video, these main caps were held in place by bolts. But for higher horsepower applications, the mains need to be held in place very strongly, and for that I've upgraded to ARP main studs. You can just thread these in by hand first, and the tips have an Allen key. Now these don't have a torque specification when you're first putting them in. They'll get their final torque when you put the nut on with the cap. But you do want to make sure they are bottomed out in the block. Just give it a little snug, make sure it's all the way in. Now before I just drop the crank in, I wanna check the bearing clearances. And this should be done by a professional, which is why I had the machine shop do it. But I bought a set of tools so I could also check it myself. So I'm gonna install this front main bearing and cap just the way I would if I was putting the engine together. So I've got my bearing here and you can see it's got this little ting on it. And that lines up with the little groove in the block. Right before I drop it in, I'm gonna clean this out, make sure there's not single little grain and also clean the back of the bearing. The uh, the tolerances we're dealing with here are like about the width of a human hair so you want to be very very cautious make sure everything's very clean. I'm gonna line that up just like that and then this part of the bearing I'm gonna push it in kind of like I'm squishing it a little bit so I don't scrape it on that sharp edge of the block. Make sure it's flush on both sides. And also make sure that you've installed the right side of the bearing. You see this bearing that goes into the cap is completely smooth here. But the side that goes into the block has a groove as well as the hole that the oil comes through. You do not put assembly lube between the bearing and the cap or the block. Um, you don't want anything that could help the bearing spin. Um, in case you're wondering what, a, what it means to spin a bearing, You've got this bearing in here like this, and what can happen is it gets damaged, and it can spin, and it closes off that oil port, and then your crankshaft or your rod has no more oil. Now you see the number one stamped on there, that's your number one main cap, and this little arrow points to the front of the engine, so make sure you're putting that on the right way. You will probably have to use a rubber mallet. Just throw a little bit of the included ARP assembly lube on each of the studs here. Now I'll torque down the cap in stages. 25, 45, 65. Now at my number one crank journal, I'm gonna throw a little assembly lube on there to protect it and then measure it with my micrometer. Once you find the fattest part, tighten down the end of the micrometer. You don't want to over tighten it and that's kind of like a little torque wrench. And when you have the proper measurement, it should be able to slide over the crank with a little bit of resistance. To set up your bore gauge, put it in between the micrometer right there and you're going to move it back and forth. So as I move this back and forth, that needle is moving around. And I'm gonna set that highest point the needle gets to 
at zero. So when I move it back and forth, it's not going above zero. Throw some assembly lube inside your bearing and move this up and down until it's perfectly centered in the bearing. And the lowest value that needle hits is your bearing clearance. That's the lowest, that is 18 ten thousandths. And I want my crank journal to be between 18 and 20 ten thousandths. For the rod bearing clearances, it's the same thing. You measure the crankshaft where the rod is gonna bolt up to, and then you use the bore gauge to measure the bearing with the cap torqued down, of course, and the difference between those two is your oil clearance. For the rods, I wanted 20 to 22 10 thousandths. If you are interested in all the clearances that I've chosen for my engine, that will also be in the link below. Now, obviously, that was a very brief overview of how to measure your bearings, because honestly, it's available online everywhere. Just Google how to read micrometers and how to measure bearing clearances and stuff like that. So anyways, on with the video. Last but not least are the thrust bearings. These go into the number four main like that and that's the bearing that stops the crankshaft from moving back and forth inside the engine so you definitely don't want to forget those now I'm going to extremely carefully drop this in do not hit the crank on any of those studs because it can very easily damage it before I put my caps on I'm gonna check my thrust bearing clearance now you can see the crankshaft obviously and then down in there on either side you can see the thrust bearings and if you look closely if I push the crank front to back it's got a tiny little bit of play in there and I want to measure that and make sure it's within spec and from what I've read online I want it to be somewhere between six and nine thousandths so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the six thousandths on my feeler gauge, see if it fits in, and then I'm gonna go bigger and bigger until I find one that does not fit, and that will tell me what my clearance is. I'm gonna push the crank towards the back of the engine, and that 6 thousandths feeler gauge just barely fits in there. I'm gonna check it with a 7 thousandths just to be sure. Yeah, the 7 thousandths does not fit, so I've got about 6 thousandths clearance, which is perfect. Now I'll take my number one main cap, and I'm gonna put this bearing in it. And you can see there the bearing is completely flush with the cap. This tightening sequence is straight from the PDF that I have linked below. And you have to remember that everything has got a loosening sequence and a tightening sequence, and they are different, and you wanna make sure that you follow the right ones. Now I'll tighten my main caps in the proper sequence and in three steps. So I'll do the entire sequence at 25 foot-pounds, then the entire sequence at 45, and then at 65. And once it's all torqued down, the crank should still spin very freely. So that's where I'm gonna end it today, guys. And I'm kind of gonna break this assembly up into several videos because it's gonna allow me to go into more detail in each video. And that's kind of the point of this whole series is to get into the details and really show you guys piece by piece what's going into the engine. So if you enjoy the content, if you enjoy the series, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And I will see you in the next one. Peace out. Back from the dead.